The humans' desperate yells reverberated across the cosmos as their warships surged from hyperspace, weapons blazing against their alien foe. As the smoldering husks of destroyed dreadnoughts spit flame into the void, Commander Spicker slouched in utter defeat, staring blankly at his longtime comrade Zorax. It's over, Speaker muttered. He rubbed his temples. Empires dead, trillions snuffed out, systems overrun, the Zorgons unstoppable. His head shook. What ships we had left couldn't stop one of their frigates. Zorax gripped the table. Millions of years, millions, the Vulcans reigned supreme, and it ends like this. The Zorgons wiped our frontier defense grid in hours, their techs beyond us. How many died on Kardak's colony alone? Five billion? Seven. On the wall displays, planet names flashed red as the Zorgons invaded one after another. Spiker's communicator crackled. Commander. Sensors are, hold on, detecting signatures emerging from hyperspace near the Zorgon fleet. They're engaging them. Spiker blinked. What put it on screen? The displays shifted to a raging void battle between Zorgon warships and small unrecognized craft, zipping and maneuvering deftly weapons flaring. They glanced at each other. Zorax cleared his throat. Who in the cosmos would be brazen enough to attack the Zorgons head-on now, after they smashed the galaxy's strongest empire without breaking a sweat. Speaker's eyes narrowed as he studied the sleek, unfamiliar vessels. He whispered one word. Humans. Zorax's eyes bulged. The prim, the humans from the fringe worlds, are they mad? A hesitant smile crept across Speaker's face. If the humans are fighting, then maybe, just maybe, this war isn't over after all. Spicker and Zorax charged into the command center, boots clanking on metal walkways. Vulcan officers darted between control stations, yelling out reports. Technicians hammered keypads, gathering data on the unexpected fleet battling the Zorgans. The clamor of urgent chatter filled the room. Spiker pushed past scrambling crew to the main viewscreen. His eyes shot wide open. The mysterious ships were minuscule compared to the massive Zorgon destroyers, yet they zipped around them like angry hornets. The unknown vessel's weapons looked almost primitive next to the aliens' advanced tech, but they struck with unbelievable accuracy and lethal tactical prowess. As Speaker watched, a tiny attacker ship rolled and dove through a hailstorm of Zorgon plasma fire. It launched a salvo of missiles, threading them through the smallest gaps in enemy shields. The warheads slammed into a battleship's engines. Explosions ripped across the Zorgon hull. Who in the seven hells are these guys? Zorax gaped. That's the finest damn flying I've ever seen, and against the Zorgons? Speaker could only shake his head, mind spinning. None of this made sense. A comms officer suddenly piped up. Commander, the unknown fleet is hailing us. Put it through, Spiker barked, spinning to face the viewscreen. The display crackled, and an alien face appeared. It had small eyes, hair on its head, and pale pinkish skin. Definitely not Vulcan. The being spoke, voice steady and strong. Greetings, Vulcan Commander. I am Captain Derek Harris of the United Earth Alliance. We heard of your plight and have come to offer our assistance. Speaker's heart hammered in his chest. Earth. He'd heard the legends of the humans, but always dismissed them as myths. Yet here they were, throwing themselves into the war against the unstoppable Zorgans, to help the Vulcans, a species on the verge of total defeat. Spaker's mind reeled. If the humans were real, what other surprises did they bring? What miracles did they have up their sleeves? Speaker could scarcely contain his disbelief as he stepped off the shuttle and onto the polished deck of the UEA Titan. The curves of the bulkheads, the blinking lights of control panels, Every inch of the flagship screamed of technology Speaker had never seen. He glanced at a digital map showing the human fleet's positions. Icons denoted ships of classes and capabilities that the Vulcan military could only dream of. A pair of crewmen escorted Spiker through gleaming halls to the bridge. The door hissed open to reveal Captain Harris standing before a massive view screen displaying the swirling melee of ships outside. The human turned a broad smile on his face, and extended his hand. Commander Speaker, welcome aboard. 
It's an honor to meet you in person. Speaker took the proffered hand, shaking it firmly. Captain Harris, I must admit, I'm still reeling from your sudden appearance. We thought Earth was just a myth. Harris chuckled. I don't blame you. We've kept to ourselves for a long time, but we've been watching and we couldn't stand by any longer. He gestured to a large table in the center of the bridge, a holographic display of the galaxy hovering above it. As they took their seats, Harris manipulated the controls, zooming in on a cluster of red dots. The Zorgans, nasty pieces of work. We've been tracking their movements, analyzing their tactics. They're powerful, but not invincible. Spiker leaned forward. You sound confident, but how can you hope to stand against them? The Vulcan Expeditionary Force was the strongest in the galaxy and they crushed us. Ah, but that's just it. The VEF was built for large-scale engagements, prolonged campaigns. Zorgans exploited that. Harris grinned. But our fleet? We're built for a different kind of war. The human tapped a few keys and the display shifted. Tiny blue triangles darted among the red dots, striking and fading away before the Zorgons could retaliate. Surgical strikes, lightning raids, we hit hard and fast where they're weakest. It's not about brute force, it's about precision. Speaker watched the simulation play out, a flicker of hope kindling in his chest. You, you really think this can work? That we can beat them? I do, Harris's eyes gleamed. But we can't do it alone, we need the Vulcans, your people's knowledge of the enemy, your resources. Together we can turn the tide. Spaker nodded slowly. Then let it be an alliance. The Vulcan Empire stands with Earth. He clasped arms with Harris, sealing the pact. As the meeting ended, and Speaker made his way back to the shuttle, his mind raced. The humans were an enigma, a wild card that had burst onto the scene. Their technology, their tactics, everything about them defied expectation. And yet, as he stepped back onto his own ship, Spiker couldn't shake a nagging feeling in his gut. The humans had appeared as if from nowhere, with capabilities beyond imagining. How had they achieved so much so quickly? What other secrets did they hide? Spiker shook his head. Those were questions for another time. For now, all that mattered was the fight ahead, the fight for the galaxy's very survival. Spicker's boots clanged on the metal deck as he strode into the Vulcan ship's command center. His mind still reeled from the revelations aboard the human vessel, but his momentary elation evaporated as he spotted Zorax. The other Vulcan leaned against a console, arms crossed, a deep frown creasing his face. Spiker, we need to talk, Zorax's voice was tight. Speaker sighed. Let me guess, it's about the humans. Zorax pushed off the console and stepped forward. You're damn right it is. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? They show up out of nowhere, right when we're on the ropes, and just happen to have exactly the tech and tactics we need to turn this around. Speaker met his gaze. They're here to help, Zorax. I've seen it myself. Or maybe they're using us. Have you considered that? What if this is all part of some agenda we don't see? Speaker opened his mouth to argue, but hesitated. Zorax's words needled at the doubts that had plagued him since leaving the Titan. He held up a hand. I hear you, Zorax, and you're not the only one with concerns. But right now the humans are the best chance we've got. And if you're wrong, if we're playing right into their hands, then we deal with that when the time comes. But for now we need them. Zorax shook his head but held his tongue. Speaker could see the unease in his eyes, a reflection of the whispers he'd heard among the crew, murmurs of distrust, of suspicion. Left unchecked, they could fester, undermining the fragile alliance before it had a chance to prove itself. Spiker straightened. I'm calling a meeting of the High Command. We need to address this head-on, make sure everyone understands what's at stake. The assembled Vulcan commanders shifted in their seats, a palpable tension hanging in the air of the briefing room. Speaker stood before them, hands clasped behind his back. I know many of you have doubts about the humans, he began, meeting each gaze in turn, and I understand those doubts. Their arrival was unexpected, 
their capabilities beyond what we imagined possible. He paused, letting his words sink in. But we cannot let our suspicions blind us to the opportunity before us. The humans have already proven their worth in battle. Their technology, their tactics, they may well be the key to our survival. Spiker gestured to the display screen, images of human and Vulcan ships flashing across it. More than that, the humans share our values, freedom, self-determination. They're not here to conquer, but to aid, to stand with us against the Zorgon threat. He leaned forward, his voice low and urgent. We have a choice before us, to let our doubts divide us or to stand united. I choose unity. I choose to believe in this alliance, in what we can achieve together, and I ask you to do the same. Silence hung in the room for a long moment, then slowly nods of assent, murmurs of agreement, some reluctant, some resolute. As the meeting adjourned, Speaker let out a slow breath. The path ahead was uncertain, the challenges daunting, but for now at least, the Vulcan High Command stood with him, stood with the humans. He could only hope it would be enough. Spiker stepped into the Titan's bustling command center, the hum of activity washing over him. Everywhere he looked, human officers worked with a fluid efficiency that left him awestruck. They moved from station to station, exchanging information and ideas with an easy familiarity that spoke of countless hours spent working side by side. At the center of it all stood Captain Harris, his brow furrowed as he studied a holographic display of the galaxy. Spikeser made his way over, nodding to the officers he passed. As he drew closer, he caught snippets of conversation, the humans' voices tinged with a mix of determination and good-natured humor. I'm telling you, if we hit the Zorgons here and here, one officer said, pointing to a cluster of stars, we can disrupt their supply lines and force them to pull back. And what about their reinforcements in the Kappa sector? Another countered, shaking her head. We'll need to neutralize those first. Harris looked up as Spiker approached, a smile spreading across his face. Commander Spiker, good to see you. I was just about to call for you. We've been analyzing the latest intel from our scouts, and I think we may have found a weakness in the Zorgan defenses. Speaker leaned in, his eyes scanning the display. Show me. As Harris launched into an explanation, pointing out key strategic points and outlining potential attack vectors, Speaker found himself marveling at the easy rapport between the human officers. They traded ideas and opinions freely, their voices rising and falling in a lively debate. It was a far cry from the rigid hierarchy of Vulcan command, where orders were given and followed without question. And yet for all their differences, Speaker could see the same fire burning in the eyes of every human in the room. They were united by a common cause, a shared determination to see the Zorgons defeated and peace restored to the galaxy. As the planning session stretched on, Speaker found himself drawn into the discussion, his own insights and experiences melding with those of the humans. Together they crafted a plan of attack, one that played to the strengths of both their fleets and exploited the weaknesses of their enemy. Finally, as the last details were finalized and the officers began to disperse to their stations, Speaker found himself alone with Captain Harris. The human leader was studying the display, his eyes distant. Captain, Speaker began, hesitating for a moment before pressing on, I must confess I am in awe of the way your people work together. The Vulcans have always prided themselves on their discipline and efficiency, but I see now that there is much we can learn from your approach. Harris turned to him, his smile warm and genuine. Thank you, Commander Spicker. I'm glad that our two peoples are finding common ground, but I must give credit where it's due. My crew is exceptional, but they are not unique among our kind. The human spirit is a remarkable thing, and it has carried us through countless challenges and adversities over the centuries. Speaker nodded, his mind racing with the implications of Harris's words. He thought back to the stories he had heard of Earth, of the many trials and triumphs of the human race, and he began to understand, perhaps for the first time, just how much the Vulcans had to gain from this alliance, not just in terms of military might, but in terms of the wisdom and resilience of the human spirit. 
But even as Speaker marveled at the human's many virtues, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was still much he didn't know about his new allies. And as he prepared for the battles to come, he wondered just what other secrets the humans might be hiding, and what impact they might have on the fate of the galaxy. Speaker's boots clanged on the polished deck of the Titan as he charged into the command center, Zorax hot on his heels. The room buzzed with tense chatter as human officers hunched over consoles, brows furrowed. Captain Harris stood at the central holotable, eyes locked on the flickering display. Captain, Spiker called out, we have urgent news. Harris glanced up, his expression grim. He waved them over. So do we, and I have a feeling it's the same news. As Speaker and Zorax reached the table, Harris tapped a key. The hologram zoomed in on a sector of space, red icons flashing. Our scouts just reported in. The Zorgons have a new weapon, some kind of energy field that can knock out ship's systems and leave them dead in the water. Speaker nodded, his suspicions confirmed. We received similar intelligence. Zorax leaned forward, studying the display. But that's not all. The Zorgons are planning to use this weapon to launch a surprise attack. He met Harris's gaze. On the Vulcan homeworld, Harris's jaw tightened. They mean to take out the heart of your empire in one fell swoop. A chill settled in Speaker's gut as the implications sank in. The Vulcan homeworld, the center of their civilization, their culture, the place where billions of his people lived and worked and raised their families. If the Zorgons succeeded... He shook his head, pushing back the rising tide of despair. We can't let that happen. I agreed. Harris's voice was steel. We need to find a way to neutralize that weapon and stop the Zorgon's attack before it begins. Spiker glanced around the room, taking in the determined faces of the human crew. These were the same men and women who had come to the Vulcan's aid when all seemed lost, who had fought beside them against impossible odds. If anyone could find a way to overcome this new threat, it was them. What's our plan? Speaker asked. Harris turned back to the hollow table, his fingers flying over the controls. I've got our best engineers and tacticians working on it now. If there's a weakness in this Zorgon weapon, we'll find it. Zorax crossed his arms. And in the meantime, we can't just sit and wait for them to attack. We won't. Harris straightened, his eyes flashing. We're going to hit them first, a preemptive strike to disrupt their plans and buy ourselves some time. Speaker felt a surge of energy course through him at the captain's words. Yes, this was what they needed. Bold action, not helpless hand-wringing. The Vulcan fleet stands ready, he said. Just give the word. Harris nodded, a ghost of a smile playing at his lips. Prepare your ships, Commander, we move out in one hour. As Speaker and Zorak strode from the command center, a new sense of purpose burned in Speaker's chest. The road ahead was dark and perilous, the odds stacked against them. But with the humans by their side, he knew they would face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and resolve. And yet even as he readied himself for the coming battle, a nagging doubt whispered at the back of his mind. The Zorgan's new weapon was a fearsome thing, and the threat to his homeworld loomed large. Could even the combined might of the Vulcans and humans hope to prevail against such overwhelming force? Spaker pushed the thought aside. They had to prevail. Failure was not an option, not when the fate of his people and the galaxy itself hung in the balance. Spiker charged into the Titan's lab, his pulse racing. The Vulcan human fleet hurtled through hyperspace, the Vulcan homeworld growing closer by the second, Spiker had to see the progress on the human weapon to counter the Zorgan's new terror with his own eyes. As the lab doors hissed open, Spicker was greeted by a whirlwind of activity. Human scientists and engineers darted between consoles, barking orders and typing furiously. At the center of the storm stood Dr. Ethan Novak, his brow furrowed as he studied a holographic schematic. Speaker approached, his eyes scanning the projection, it was a ship's shield generator, but modified in ways he'd never seen. Novak glanced up, a grin spreading across his face. Commander Speaker, perfect timing, I think we've had a breakthrough. Spiker raised an eyebrow. 
You found a way to stop the Zorgan weapon? Potentially. Novak zoomed in on a section of the schematic. See these emitters? If we can tune them to the right frequency, they should generate a field of graviton particles that will disrupt the Zorgan's energy weapon. Speaker leaned in, his mind racing to follow Novak's explanation. It was a brilliant concept, unlike anything the Vulcan scientists had proposed. But would it work? As if reading his thoughts, Dr. Lena Sorensen, Novak's colleague, spoke up. The simulations are promising, but we need to test it on a real shield generator to be sure. Novak nodded, his eyes gleaming with determination. And we need to do it fast. The fleet will reach Vulcan space in a matter of hours. Speaker straightened, his resolve hardening. Then there's no time to waste. What do you need from me? Novak and Sorensen exchanged a glance. We need access to one of your ship's shield generators, Sorensen said, and we need your best engineers to help us integrate the modifications. Speaker didn't hesitate. Done, I'll have my team ready in ten minutes. As he turned to leave, Spiker paused, looking back at the human scientists. They were already back at work, their focus absolute, their determination unshakable. In that moment, Spiker felt a swell of something he'd never experienced before. Hope. The next few hours passed in a blur of activity. Speaker worked side by side with Novak and Sorensen, watching in awe as they dismantled and rebuilt the Vulcan ship's shield generator with a speed and precision that defied belief. As the final component slotted into place, Novak stepped back, wiping sweat from his brow. That's it. The modifications are complete. Sorensen typed a command into her console, her eyes locked on the readout. Graviton emitters are online, field strength is nominal. Spiker held his breath as Novak initiated the test sequence. For a moment nothing happened. Then the generator hummed to life, a shimmering field of energy enveloping the ship. Sorensen's eyes widened. It's working, the graviton field is stable. Novak let out a whoop of joy, his face splitting into a grin. Speaker felt a rush of elation, a sense of possibility that had seemed lost for so long. But even as they celebrated their success, a klaxon blared through the ship's speakers. Speaker's heart seized as he recognized the sound, a proximity alert. He sprinted to the nearest viewport, his eyes straining against the blackness of space. There in the distance, a fleet of ships emerged from hyperspace, their hulls gleaming with an all-too-familiar menace. The Zorgons had arrived. Speaker's hand clenched into a fist as he stared at the enemy ships, their weapons already glowing with deadly intent. Somewhere out there, the Zorgon commander was preparing to unleash their devastating new weapon upon the Vulcan homeworld. But this time, Speaker and his allies were ready. With the human graviton shield by their side, they would face the Zorgon threat head-on, no matter the cost. Spiker turned to Novak and Sorensen, his eyes blazing with resolve. It's time. Let's show these bastards what happens when they mess with the Vulcan-Human Alliance. The scientists nodded, their own determination mirroring his own. Together they strode from the lab, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Spiker rushed into the conference room aboard the Titan, his boots clanging on the metal deck. The space buzzed with a mix of anxious murmurs and excited chatter from the assembled Vulcan and human commanders. Captain Harris stood at the head of the table, his face serious. Commander Speaker, I have critical news, Harris said. Dr. Novak's team has created a device to neutralize the Zorgon's weapon. A jolt of hope surged through Speaker, his heart pounding, a way to counter the Zorgon's terrifying new advantage. But even as optimism bloomed, the grim reality of the war tempered it. That's incredible, Spiker said. But the Zorgan fleet will reach Vulcan soon. How can we deploy the device in time? Harris nodded, pride and worry warring in his eyes. That's the rub. It's still a prototype and we only have one. We need to get it close to the Zorgon ships to disrupt their weapon, but... He took a breath. It requires sending a small team on what may likely be a one-way trip. Ice seemed to flood Spiker's veins at the prospect of a suicide mission but he instantly knew it was the only way. Every Vulcan life, the very soul of his civilization, 
hung in the balance. I'll lead the mission, Spiker declared without hesitation. I'll take Vulcan and human volunteers. We'll do whatever it takes to get that device where it needs to be. Harris met his gaze, respect and concern mingling on his face. Are you certain, Commander? The odds... There's no guarantee. I'm sure, Speaker said firmly. The fate of my people, of the whole damned galaxy, depends on this. Failure is not an option. As the room erupted into a frenzy of planning and preparation, Speaker stepped into the corridor, his mind swimming. Fear, anticipation, grim resolve, all churned within him. Footsteps approached, and he turned to find Zorax, his expression solemn. Speaker, I... Zorak swallowed. Be careful out there. Vulcan needs you. I need you. Spiker clasped his friend's hand, emotion welling up inside him. I'll give it everything I've got, Zorax, but if I don't make it back... He met Zorax's eyes. Serving with you, with all Vulcans, has been the greatest honor. Zorax blinked back tears and nodded. The honor is mine, my friend. Now go show those Zorgon bastards what Vulcans and humans can do together. Minutes later, Speaker strapped into the command chair of a small stealthy shuttle, his hand-picked team of human and Vulcan volunteers at their stations. As the craft slipped out of the Titan's hangar and into the starry void, a strange calm settled over him. The odds were stacked against them, the danger immense, but with human courage and ingenuity combined with Vulcan strength and determination, Speaker dared to hope they had a fighting chance. Whatever challenges lay ahead, whatever sacrifices this mission demanded, Speaker swore to meet them head on. For Vulcan, for Earth, for the future of every free species in the galaxy, he would give anything and everything to stop the Zorgan menace. The shuttle kicked into high warp, stars blurring into streaks of light as it rocketed toward the enemy fleet and the most pivotal battle of Speaker's life. He glanced at the mission clock. Thirty minutes until they reached the engagement zone. Thirty minutes until the fate of worlds was decided. Speaker closed his eyes and whispered a prayer to the ancient Vulcan gods he'd never quite believed in. Guide my actions, steady my hand. If I die today, let it be with honor, knowing I did all I could to save my people. He opened his eyes and straightened in his chair, every muscle taut with readiness. One way or another, this war ended today, and if Speaker had anything to say about it, it would end with Vulcan triumphant and the Zorgan threat vanquished once and for all. Proximity alerts blared, and Speaker's gaze locked onto the viewscreen. The twisted shapes of Zorgan warships loomed before them, filling the screen. The shuttle banked hard, alarms shrieking as the enemy's sensor beams swept over its hull. In the co-pilot's seat, Lieutenant Cal, a grizzled human with ice in his veins, flashed Speaker a tight grin. Looks like this is where the fun begins, eh, Commander? Spiker answered with a sharp nod, his grip tightening on the armrests. Take us in, Lieutenant, tight and fast. Don't give the bastards a chance to lock on. Aye, sir, Cal said, hands flying over the controls. The shuttle jinked and juked, weaving through a hailstorm of plasma fire, Speaker's eyes narrowed as a massive ship loomed ahead, bristling with weapons, the Zorgon flagship. There, he barked, stabbing a finger at the screen. That's our target. Get us as close as you can. We'll deploy the device and punch our way back out. But even as the words left his mouth, a flicker of movement caught his eye. A swarm of Zorgon fighters pouring from the flagship's hangar bays like angry insects from a kicked hive. Incoming, Cal yelled wrenching the shuttle into a stomach-churning dive. The cockpit filled with the shrill scream of straining engines and overstressed hull plates. Speaker slapped the comms panel. All hands, prepare to repel boarders. We're about to have company. The deck shuddered under his feet as the first plasma blasts hammered into the shuttle's shields. Warning lights flashed red across the control board, shield strength dropping fast, hull integrity compromised. Speaker bared his teeth in a feral grin, the Zorgans wanted a fight. He'd give them a damn fight. He'd show them what it meant to face the combined fury of Vulcan and Earth. For Vulcan, Speaker roared, drawing his sidearm and charging towards the airlock. For Earth, for the galaxy! 
The battle for the future had begun, and Speaker would see it through to the bitter end no matter the cost. Speaker's heartbeat quickened as Novak's ship pulled alongside his shuttle, matching their velocity. He'd had his doubts about this desperate gambit, but seeing the human scientist's face on the view screen, eyes bright with determination, Speaker felt a flicker of hope. Maybe, just maybe, they had a shot at this after all. Dr. Novak, you're a sight for sore eyes, Speaker said, his voice thick with emotion. But what in the cosmos are you doing out here? I thought you were needed on the Titan. Novak's grin widened, his teeth flashing white against his tanned skin. Oh, I'm still needed there, Commander, but I figured I could do more good out here, helping you deliver the device. Besides, I couldn't let you have all the fun, could I? Despite the gravity of the situation, Speaker found himself chuckling. The human's bravado was infectious, his spirit unbreakable. I don't know what we did to deserve allies like you, Doctor, but I'm damn glad you're here. As the two ships raced towards the looming Zorgan fleet, Novak's face turned serious. Commander, we've been monitoring their comms chatter. Looks like they're planning to use their new weapon to take out Vulcan's planetary defense grid. If they succeed... Spiker's blood ran cold. He knew all too well what would happen if the Zorgons breached Vulcan's defenses. Billions of lives snuffed out in an instant, a civilization erased from the cosmos. We can't let that happen, Speaker growled, his hands tightening on the shuttle's controls. How close do we need to get to deploy the device? Novak consulted his readings, his brow furrowed. We'll need to be within a few hundred clicks of their flagship, but that's easier said than done. They'll have their entire fleet deployed around the planet, and they'll be on high alert for any signs of trouble. Speaker's mind raced, running through scenarios and strategies. They were just two small ships against a Zorgon armada. They'd need every trick in the book to pull this off. What if we use the planet's magnetic field to mask our approach? Speaker mused, his eyes narrowing. Or find a way to create a diversion, draw their attention away from us? Novak's face lit up, his eyes sparkling with excitement. I like the way you think, Commander. Between your tactical expertise and my scientific know-how, I think we might just have a shot at this. As the two ships hurtled towards their target, Speaker felt a sense of purpose and determination, like he'd never known. The fate of his people, of the entire galaxy, rested on their shoulders. They could not, would not, fail. He glanced around at his team, Vulcans and humans united in a common cause. Their faces were grim, their jaws set with resolve. They knew the odds, knew the risks, but they would face them together, come what may. Speaker turned back to the viewscreen, his eyes locked on the distant specks of the Zorgan fleet. Somewhere out there the enemy waited, their terrible weapon poised to strike, but they had no idea what was coming for them. Hold on tight, everyone, Speaker called out, his voice ringing with authority. We're going in. The shuttle's engines roared as Speaker pushed the throttle to the limit. Novak's ship matched his acceleration, the two vessels streaking towards the Zorgon lines like avenging angels. Plasma blasts flashed past them, the enemy's fire growing thicker with each passing second. Speaker gritted his teeth as the shuttle shuddered under the onslaught its shield straining to hold. Just a little further, just a little more. Suddenly a massive shape loomed before them, blotting out the stars. The Zorgon flagship, its hull bristling with weapons, its very presence radiating menace. This was it, the moment of truth. Everything they'd fought for, everything they'd sacrificed, it all came down to this. Speaker's hand hovered over the shuttle's weapons controls, his finger twitching with anticipation. Beside him, Novak's face was a mask of concentration, his hands flying over his console as he prepared to deploy the device. The flagship grew larger and larger in the viewscreen, its hull plates filling their vision. Speaker could see the individual Zorgon soldiers manning their battle stations, their faces twisted with hatred and rage. Steady, Speaker whispered, as much to himself as to his team. Steady! A cold knot twisted in Speaker's gut as Zorax's desperate voice crackled over the comlink. Abort the mission? Now? 
Speaker sputtered, his mind reeling. Zorax, we're about to end this war. Novak gripped the shuttle's controls, his knuckles white. His face had gone ashen at Zorax's words. Shalpika, you don't understand, Zorax pleaded, his voice strained. The humans have betrayed us. They've been working with the Zorgans all along. The words hit Speaker like a plasma bolt to the chest. He stared at the calm Speaker, struggling to process the accusation. Beside him, Novak sat rigid, his eyes wide with shock and horror. That, um, that can't be right, Spiker stammered. The humans are our allies, our friends. They wouldn't... But even as the denial left his lips, doubt wormed through his mind. The humans' secretive behavior, their miraculous technology, their too-perfect timing. It all crashed together, a sick realization dawning. I'm sorry, Speaker, Zorak said, genuine anguish in his voice. We intercepted Zorgan transmissions. This has been their plan from the start. The humans were just a means to an end, a way to infiltrate and undermine us. Speaker's hands clenched into fists, rage and betrayal burning through his veins, but he forced the emotions down. There would be time for anger later. Now he had to act. Hazorax, listen to me, he said, his voice hard as steel. No matter what happens, no matter what the human's true agenda is, you cannot let Vulcan fall. Protect our homeworld at any cost, promise me. There was a heavy pause, then, I promise, Speaker. But what about you? What will you do? Speaker turned to Novak. The human's face was a mask of anguish, his eyes pleading. Part of Speaker yearned to lash out, to demand answers, but he pushed the impulse aside. I'll finish the mission, he said coldly. I'll make sure the Zorgons pay for this treachery, and then... He let the sentence hang. In truth, he had no idea what came next. His world had just shattered, everything he thought he knew exposed as a lie. Ahead, the Zorgon flagship loomed, a monstrous silhouette against the stars. Its weapons glowed with deadly intent, poised to rain destruction upon Vulcan. Spaker straightened in his seat. One way or another, this ended now. He had nothing left to lose. Engage! he ordered, his voice devoid of emotion. The shuttle surged forward, racing headlong into the jaws of death. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.